there, all bod. We hear from Horse Racing Nation with another weekly episode of the Outrun the Odds video segment where I highlight horses at prices. And as always, thank you for liking this video, subscribing to the Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel, and turning notifications on so you don't miss any of our future video handicapping content. If you're taking a look at Cigar Mile Day at Aqueduct like I am, and you're looking at some of those multi-race sequences, there are a couple of short price favorites in there that are tough to get around. For me, that's Julia Shining as well as Zandon. But I'm going to try to beat Tuskegee Airmen in the Remsen, and I do have a price in the finale that'll close out all of those multi-race sequences like the Pick 6, Pick 5, and Late Pick 4. And you'll need some prices if you're going to rely on some of those shorter prices elsewhere. So looking at that grade two Remsen, all eyes will be on the eight to five favorite in Tuskegee Airmen, who does come in with two wins, but I'm not totally convinced that more distance is going to be his friend moving forward. If the track is playing anything like it is as of this recording on Thursday, you want horses that are a little bit closer to the pace, and that might lead you to a horse that finished second to him last time with Midnight Trouble, but I'm going to try to beat both of them in here. While my top pick is going to be Arctic Arrogance, I will also be using the number one horse, Il Miracolo, who is 12 to 1 on the morning line and is facing winners for the first time after running solely at Gulfstream so far. He did put together three consecutive seconds before getting the win, and you can see a progression each time from him. On debut at five and a half furlongs, he's the number three horse, and he's off near the back of the pack, while the eventual winner has a daylight advantage from the start. Rushing up into contention, Il Miracolo was never getting to that horse, but I do like that he was able to overcome that poor break and at least get himself into contention. And then second time out at six and a half furlongs, he's the number 10 horse. He has some gate issues again, and he gets taken back to last in there. Instead of rushing up, he then has to go wide, take kickback, and he does end up finishing second once again. First time at a mile, he's the number two horse, and it's a much more tightly grouped pack this time, and he has to rally inside of horses before switching out, and once again, he's just second best to a runaway winner in there. Finally, last time out, they just went ahead and put him on the lead, and even though he didn't switch leads in the stretch this time, he was really never in doubt in that race and earned a 70 buyer, which is the best of his career so far. Now, obviously, the son of Gunrunner will have to improve, and Gulfstream Gulf shippers are sometimes a little bit questionable. But I do like that he's shown a variety of dimensions so far, and he's been able to have more racing experience than most horses in here. He's gotten an education out of each of those races with having to take kickback, raid in behind horses, overcome a poor start, or be the pace setter if necessary. I don't know that he's going to be the pace setter in this race coming up in the Remsen, as there is other speed signed on in here, but I do feel as though he can sit close um, or they can try to take them gate to wire. I feel as though he'll be able to handle the mile and an eighth distance based on his pedigree, while some others may not want to stretch out this far. And I'm willing to take a chance at a price with a horse where I think some of the shorter prices might be a little bit vulnerable and might be coming in off some suspect form at out-of-town tracks. Moving on to the finale, it's a race number 10, and I'm taking a look at the nine-horse Gaslight, who is 10 to 1 on the morning line in this spot as a potential upsetter. This is going to be the closing leg of all of your multis, as mentioned before. And again, if you like some of those shorter-priced horses, you're going to have to find a better price elsewhere to make playing these sequences worth your while. So I'll, I'll take a shot with Gaslight, who I think has some dirtied-up form. He was previously in the Brad Cox barn when he first started his career breaking his main and second time out in a front-running fashion. And maybe at one point they thought that he was going to be somebody because they had put him in an allowance race after that, and he was a short price in there. Unfortunately, he disappointed, and he, we just didn't see him for over a year until he returned in a claiming race with a $16,000 tag, and that's a huge red flag to me. But Brad Cox does have good numbers with drops like that, and this horse added to those statistics rating as the number two to the outside, wearing down of the pace that are motion to strike, and then obviously getting claimed and moving to the Pat Quick Barn. Now, since being in that barn, he ran twice on the turf and then twice back on the dirt, and he didn't really do much running in all four of those starts. They did give him a brief freshening, and he returned in the starter allowance on November 18th. He's the two horse in last early in there, out in the middle of the track, and making a small move to get up for third 
And while this wasn't necessarily overwhelmingly positive or eye-catching or telling me that he's a standout in this field, it shows me that he has a little bit more interest and ability than we'd seen over this summer since he switched barns and that perhaps maybe that short break, maybe there was a minor issue, maybe he just needed a little time off and he's coming back as a fresher horse. So I'm a little bit optimistic about his ability going into this spot where I do have some questions about some of the shorter prices in here. He's a little tough to trust, obviously, but so are some of those shorter priced horses. And I'd rather ask those questions at 10 to 1 than at 3 to 1. So it's gaslight for me in the finale at Aqueduct. So the horses that I'm interested in this week are the number one, Il Miracolo in the Remsen, and the number nine, Gaslight in the finale on Cigar Mile Day. Thanks as always for watching and good luck this weekend.